ladies and gentlemen, the Reverend uh, Ken Miller will be leading us in our services this afternoon. I just want to say as I get started, um, it is a, really a delight for me to be able to be here with uh, you as family and friends. And I also want to thank you as friends. You know, one of the things I've learned a little bit about Alan in the uh, short time I've known the family um, is that this is a guy that loved life, he loved family, and he certainly loved his friends. And that's obvious with so many of you here just to support him. So I just want to applaud you as friends to be here to, to be, uh, not to support him, but to support his family. So I just think that's awesome. It's a real testimony to his life. Um, I'd like to just start a time, if you would, just pray, and, um, and we'll go from there, okay? So let's pray. So, Father, thank you for the privilege that we have to come and to celebrate the life of Alan um, Papalardo, and I just pray that as we gather here in this short time this afternoon, um, that you be blessed, and that Alan's family would be encouraged and that his friends would be encouraged, and that together that their hearts would rejoice in the fact that they've had the privilege to know Alan, whatever it is that they might have called him, by be it dad or pappy or just a friend. But uh, Lord, I pray that you would lead this time by your spirit, that the family would uh, be blessed um, by the words that are spoken, and this would be just truly a celebration of his life. So thank you for it. And uh, just ask you to lead us now by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So again, I uh, thank the family, Eva in particular. Uh, I'm pastor at Bucks County Community Church. And uh, Eva Marie, uh, Moe's wife, goes to our church. And the uh, family asked if I would come in and uh, lead your service. And um, I'm, again, just, just grateful for the opportunity. I want you to know that. Uh, I won't take that, take that for granted. Um, what I'd like to do as we uh, get started, and I know some of you are over on the, uh, on the other side there, um, I'd like to give you an opportunity if uh, you'd like to just share something about Alan's life uh, that uh, stands out, maybe a, short, a story or something that, that you remember about him. And um, those of you who are on the other side, uh, we're going to ask the funeral directors over there, and uh, we're going to ask if, um, if you would just stand up and just come over and stand in the doorway or stand right here. Um, and want to share a little bit. So uh, this is being recorded so that it will be online uh, for folks that weren't able to attend today. So they certainly would like to be able to see who you are as well. So uh, with that said, um, is there anyone here or anyone on the other side that would just like to share something? I know not everybody jumps at once, so, so uh, take your time. I'm Billy, and Alan and I grew up together. Well, we're still growing up, I am. But um, I remember a lot of fond memories of Al growing up. Um, I mean, he lived so close to the canal, and we always send Al onto the canal first to see if it was safe for everyone else to go on. <laughs> you know, if it can hold Al, can hold us all. <laughs> and uh, one time in particular, Al and I uh, went out on a date, and he came to my house with a bouquet of flowers, and I said, oh, they're nice. Oh, she said, they're not for you. They're for your mother. <laughs> I said, well, heck the heck, heck, what's all that, you know? But he was just such a good guy and a heart of gold, and he'll, he'll live on because of all the goodness that he shared with each and every one of us. And we're just blessed to know him, and um, God bless you, Al. Thank you. Thanks, Lord. You can clap if you want to. That's all right. I don't know if there's any rules with these things. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Come on. I have a story about Al that I just found out the uh, family didn't even know. He was getting ready. He and Al's in college here. He was getting ready for a month off cancer care. And our station wagon was parked in front of our house. And all of a sudden, it was up on the sidewalk. 
Uh oh. His mom showed up. She was very upset. And I had never met his mom. I was That's great. That's good memory. Well, good for some folks. <laughs> That's a fun story. Yeah. Anybody else? There's sometimes there's things you're thinking, I want to say it, I want to say it, and then you know you wish you had, you had that opportunity. So I don't want to drag it out, but I definitely want to give you a little bit of time. I told the family we'll do. Yes, go ahead. Would you mind? Would you mind coming up here? Okay. That way they can hear you on the other side. That's all. Okay. Okay. Nice fair man. That's awesome. Yeah. Good words. It's a great legacy, too, to leave with family and with grandchildren. You know, it's not always about us. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. You folks on the other side, I'm assuming that uh, you all don't have anything else? On this side one time, twice, three times, all right. Fast if um, how uh, Wilcox, a uh, friend of Alan, greeted me when I walked in this afternoon and um, he wanted to share a passage and uh, wanted to make sure he wasn't stepping on my toes and <laughs> absolutely that is not the case. So brother, why don't you come on up and go ahead and, and share that. Okay, this is something I shared with the family the other day. It's from the book of John 14, 1 to 6. It's when Jesus is trying to explain to the disciples why he has to leave, why he has to leave them, and they don't get it. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you will also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And of course, Thomas, being the doubter, says to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thanks, Hal. So those are great words, really, really classic things that Jesus said. And um, what I like to do is uh, kind of draw our attention there, um, talk a little bit about what uh, Hal just read. Um, you may or may not be familiar with a guy named Sir John Franklin. Um, probably most of you aren't familiar with him, but uh, he was a, a sea captain, and he led what was one of the largest voyages of exploration to the Arctic that the British Empire had ever launched. 128 men were led by one of Britain's most seasoned naval captains. Certainly, uh, this is John Franklin I speak of. And um, <clears throat> they set off from London in May of 1845 to pioneer a route through the icy Northwest Passage. And many sailors on board thought they would really complete their mission within a year. Um, three years later, there was still no word from Franklin or his men. And the shaken Royal Navy launched what was the first in a long series 
of search parties. And uh, they actually never found them until uh, probably about 15 years ago. Um, and uh, of course, their bodies were preserved and, and whatnot because of the, uh, the cold. Um, <clears throat> but it was an ill-fated voyage. And the, if you look at the, uh, the transcripts of what was on the ship at the time, uh, they had a lot of chocolate, a lot of tea, a full library. But it was interesting when you looked at it, it was more like a cruise than it was a voyage to go into a place that they were ill-prepared for. And uh, pro probably in part, it's why they didn't make it back. They just didn't know what they were getting themselves into. And, um, you know, our spiritual journey is, is really a lot like that. Um, many of us really are ill-prepared, and, and sometimes we have a lot of the wrong stuff, as uh, Sir John Franklin did on his trip. Sometimes we wish we could start over, and maybe you've been there at times. Sometimes we wish we never started at all. And sometimes we wish we had someone to tell us how to get to where we're going because we're ju we just aren't sure if we're on the right path. And this morning, or this afternoon rather, what I want to do is just share a, th a few thoughts with you as it relates to this and some of the things that Jesus himself actually said. Um, you know, I was walking around and looking at uh, some of the pictures and reading some of the, uh, the things that um, were laid out by the family and whatnot. And I was thinking, um, Alan is a man, probably in many ways, uh, had a lot in common with Jesus. He was a carpenter. He, uh, Jesus loved fishermen, by the way. We know some of his closest companions were fishermen. And uh, I tell you what, there was probably some days that Alan really wished he had Jesus with him. You know, just cast the nets on the other side of the boat, and he pulled back just a ton load of fish. And uh, uh, it would have been neat. He's a Giants fan, but uh, besides that, um, Jesus said, though, and I want to just encourage you with these few things. He says, listen, do not let your heart be troubled. And this afternoon, uh, you as family, Linda and, and kids, I know there's things that can weigh heavy on you at this time. Um, the loss of someone that uh, you clearly love, a lot of people love Alan, and your heart is heavy. And you ask a lot of questions. And this is the time to ask questions. Um, you know, I get the opportunity to talk with people a lot. And when it comes to death, death is troublesome, isn't it? It really is. And one of the reasons, and I absolutely believe this, and this might seem a little foreign to you, but one of the reasons that death is troublesome is because God never created us as human beings for death. We were created to live. We're not just physical in nature. You realize that. When God created you in your mother's womb, you were created not just as a physical being, but you were created as a spiritual being. And when we come to a place like this and we see a loved one like Alan, it troubles our hearts because death doesn't feel right. And it's understood that it doesn't feel right because God didn't create us for death. He created us to live eternally. And the disciples were troubled regarding what Jesus had said, as Hal had mentioned, because Jesus was getting ready to leave. And he says, listen, don't let your heart be troubled because I'm leaving. And he goes on, he says, believe in God, but believe also in me. And the reason he says that is because Jesus was God. You know, we can talk a lot about God, and God's kind of generic in our culture, isn't he? But when you mention Jesus, that changes the game for a lot of folks. And I want you to just think about that because one of the things that Jesus asked his disciples was this, who do you say that I am? And I want to ask you this morning or this afternoon, who do you believe that Jesus really is? Jesus says that he's God. He says, believe in God, believe also in me. Because if you're going to say I am the Father, we're one. We're one the same. So who do you believe that Jesus is? And if you believe that Jesus is who that he said he was, and that he has gone to prepare a place, then we can take to heart what he said, let not your heart be troubled. Because what he's saying is, this life isn't it. There's more to come. Do you believe that? Listen to this. He says, in my Father's house, and now I'm just going to re-echo some of the things that you said. He says, in my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
for I go to prepare a place for you. And there again is the reaffirmation that there is something beyond this life, guys. There is something that you have to look forward to. I just talked to my church about this. when We talked about the word hope. In our culture, we see hope as something that's sort of wishful thinking. But as a Christian, as a believer in Jesus, hope is something different. It's something that we have expectantly that is to come. And I believe when my body is laid out and I take my last breath, that immediately as a believer in Jesus, my soul is in the presence of God because I believe that this life isn't it. And the reason I believe that is because Jesus Christ, not only did he walk on this earth, not only did he claim to be God, and not only do I believe he is God, and the, and the word of God purports that he is, but he, re, he, was, he rose again. He's resurrected. In fact, in 1 Corinthians it tells us, if Christ is not risen, we have no hope. But because he is risen, and I believe absolutely that he is, as a believer in Jesus, we have incredible hope. Let's be honest. Something tells us that there is something beyond this world, doesn't there? Something tells you there's something beyond this. This isn't where it ends. Jesus affirms that. So he says, let not your heart be troubled. Listen to it again. Do not let your heart be troubled. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. Believe in God, believe in also, also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. Then he says this, and this is encouraging. He says, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. What he's saying is, to be in heaven is to be with me. To be in heaven is to be with me. And then he says this, and you know the way where I'm going. And Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? And Jesus said to him, and this is, this is important. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And I just want to camp out for just a minute there because one of the things that we do as human beings, because we know that there's something beyond us, that there's some, some power, some force, some supreme being, some God, and I know that because in Romans chapter 1 it says, that which is known about God God has made evident within them. So every one of you here this morning and those of you on the other side, whether you go to church or you don't go to church, that doesn't really matter to me. What's interesting is that probably very few of us that are gathered here are atheists. Maybe you are, but very few of us are because something in you tells you that there is a God. And what's important is to ask the question, who is he? Well, Jesus says, I'm, the, I'm your guy. I'm who you're looking for. You know, I came across a uh, bumper, it wasn't a bumper sticker, actually. It was a, uh, it was a license plate tag. And, and on the back of the license plate, now people can personalize their, their license. It said, I'm the man. I-M-D-M-A-N. I thought, well, that's kind of bold. That should be Jesus's. Because Jesus's car, I think, should say, I'm the man. If you're looking for God, I'm the man. Who do you say that he is? Jesus says, I am the way. And I want to just reaffirm this is that if you're looking for hope, you're looking for salvation. And, you know, when we come to a life celebration like this, this is where we begin to ask that question. You know, where will I go? What will my eternity be like? Who do I follow? And Jesus says, follow me. I'm the way. And then there's the question, well, how do I know it's true? Can I even know what's true because life is so relative in our culture anymore? You know, how do I know that there's any truth? And Jesus says, I am the way. And let me tell you, I am the truth. If you're looking for truth, you need to look to me. Look to me. I am the way. I am the truth. And then he says, I am the life. And those words are powerful because as we look at all of life, we see darkness, we see pain, we see suffering, we see what doesn't seem right to us. And Jesus says, look to me, let not your heart be troubled. And I share that with you because that is the core of the gospel message. It says, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. 
from now on you know him and I have seen him. Jesus is just affirming that God is real and follow me, believe in me. The challenge is this, is that all of us most likely believe in God. And in James chapter 1, or chapter 5 rather, it says that the demons believe in God. They believe that God is one and they shudder. But the difference between believing faith and or believing in God and, and saving faith is what we call a faith that basically calls on Jesus to be the Lord of your life. You recognize that we blow it a lot in life. I've blown it. Alan's blown it. As good as a man as he is and, and was, um, as good of a man I try to be and as you try to be, a man or a woman, we all blow it. But I want to encourage you with this, is that because we're not perfect, Jesus was perfect, and that he loves you and he gave his life for you. There's a couple of seats right here. Two seats. So I want to encourage you with that, that you not let your heart be troubled, that God loves you, he gave his son for you, and that the day comes when we're all laid out, which we all will be, that there is a hope that you can have if you put your faith in Jesus Christ. And I hope you know that I can't speak for Alan because I didn't really know Alan on a spiritual level, um, but I'd like to hope that uh, he's in the presence of our Lord. Uh, but I can't say that. I don't know. Um, but I can tell you this. This is something this morning or this afternoon that you can know. It's not about, I hope I'm good enough, because we don't get in on based, based on what we do. We get in on what he's done. That's why he's our savior, because we need him to save us. And I hope you know that this afternoon. And I want to encourage you with that, and if you have any questions you want to talk uh, later, uh, I would certainly love to be able to talk with you and encourage your heart even more. Um, there's a uh, poem that I want to read that I think is fitting. In fact, I saw the book sitting over here on the table in the other room. <clears throat> it's called The Dash by Linda Ellis. Are, are some of you familiar with that? How you are, sure. Anyone else? Familiar with it? Well, let me read this. Let me read this to you, and I think it's very fitting, and I think it's appropriate for, um, for Alan's life. It says this. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted the first came the date of her birth, and he spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth, and now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel. Be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remember that this special dash might only last a little while. So, when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say and how you spent your dash? Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. We need to consider how we live our lives. A passage I just want to share in closing that was, um, and still is, uh, dear to uh, family's heart is Isaiah 41.10. And in there Isaiah wrote, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxious, anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do not fear, for I am with you. And I hope that you know that, that God loves you, he gave his life for you, and he's closer than you realize. Let me pray with you. So, Father, thank you for the privilege that you give me to share just a bit of your word this afternoon with this family and with these friends. 
Father, for Alan, we give you thanks, especially family and friends here who knew him and were able to take that simple poem and reflect on how Alan really spent his dash. And clearly, he spent it well. And I pray that he is able to stand before you and to hear those precious words, well done. The Father, as we leave here this afternoon, and the family says their final goodbyes, Lord, if they know you, and with the hope that Alan knows you, I pray that they don't leave with saying goodbye, but they'll leave with simply, I'll see you again. So, Father, with that, I pray over this family, for Linda, for the children, that they would find comfort in memories, that they would find comfort in their love for each other, that they would find comfort in the legacy that Alan has left, what it means to be a good man, a good dad. But most importantly, Father, I pray that they would find comfort in you. So bless them. Let them know that you're present. Let them know that you love them. And I pray that you would walk through them in the days and the weeks to come, especially when the days seem very dark. Let them know that you're there. Let them know that you're present. I ask and pray this in our Savior name, Jesus. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the family, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Pastor Miller, as well as all of the relatives and friends for the acts of kindness that have been extended to the family over the past several days. I've been asked to announce that everyone is cordially invited to return to Gabriel's Restaurant, which is the formal, former Club Capri on Emily Road, uh, immediately upon leaving the, semi, uh, I'm sorry, the funeral home today where refreshments have been prepared for you. This now concludes the services. At this time, I'm going to ask the ladies and gentlemen that are in the living room area to come in and pay their final respects. Then following that, I'm going to have you folks here in the chapel step forward, starting from the rear, and come forward and pay your respects to the family as well. And then you may all go directly to your cars at that time. If you have not signed the register book, it is available here. Please feel free to sign that prior to leaving the funeral home today. Thank you. <laughs>